Good evening, everyone. I would extend my sincere thanks to Brother Joseph. And I'm very happy that I'm getting an opportunity today to continue with the formation session. And I would like to thank each and every one of you who have been regular in the formation and have been listening to the word of God and have been inspired to understand this formation and to understand the life of St. Francis and now how God worked through his life, the plans that he had, and what God used him, and God had a different plan for him. So similarly, in our life also, we have a lot of plans that we make, but God also uses us mightily, and he has plans for each and every one of us. So without wasting further, I would like to write, go into the topic of penance, as brother last time extensively spoke on the topic of penance. So similarly, you and I would like to continue, take that same very penance further and try to a little bit ex, uh, elaborate on it. As you very well know that we all, since we have been listening to this formation session, we know that the secular Franciscan order has been called in a very, very different names. We have been called as penitents of Assisi. We have been also called as tertiaries. We have also been called as the third order or the secular Franciscan order and so on and so forth. But the name and the title that appropriately, you know, matches to the name, the original name is the order of brothers and sisters of penance. And as brother in the last session spoke about penance, so if you see the Blessed Trinity, there is so much of love between the Father and the Son. There's so much of love and that union between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit as brother in, in one of the sessions so beautifully explained about the Blessed Trinity and the love that exists between one of all three of them, three persons, but one God. Similarly, that same love that Lord is opening his heart and he's giving us an opportunity through this order to understand the love that is there between the Trinity, we have to have a relationship with our Lord. And that relationship can be manifested through imitating his life and through imitating the life of the human element of Jesus Christ. That is why we have been given a beautiful name that St. Francis understood. They're called as the order of brothers and sisters of penance. Penance has both, you know, interior as well as exterior manifestation or the interior or the external signs. Let us understand this in a, through the biblical scripture. So first, interior conversion. The most important conversion is the, the change of the heart, is the metanoia. We have to understand that we have been created in the image and likeness of God. And as we have been created in the image and likeness of God, we have to follow in the footsteps of a Lord. And we have committed many, many sins. And as a result, we have grieved the Holy Spirit. So let us reflect how penance should be done. As brother has gone extensively, I will just go into a few biblical scriptures. The first scripture is Job 42 verse 6. So let me read from Job 42 verse 6. That is page 420 of the Old Testament. So all those who are having the Old Testament, y'all can just open it or y'all can just listen to me. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. So the second word of God is the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 9, verse 3. So y'all can write this or y'all can even pay attention to what I'm reading. In the Old Testament, page 746, Daniel chapter 9, verse 3. Then Daniel is praying for his people. So he goes on, he says, Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and supplications, with fasting and and sackcloth and ashes. The third word of God that I would like to take today is Acts of the Apostles, 
chapter 26 verse 19 to 20 page 123 of the new testament acts chapter 26 verse 19 to 20 where paul is preaching and he says wherefore o king agrippa i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision but declared first to those at damascus then at jerusalem and throughout all the country of judea and also to the gentiles that they should repent and turn to god and perform deeds that are worthy of their repentance so as you can clearly see that this order is a special calling and this order is motivated by the holy spirit the secular franciscan order is motivated by the holy spirit and the holy spirit is asking each and every one of us for a change of heart that is the interior conversion there are certain keys to conversion those keys are fasting prayer alms giving these are the external vehicles or the external signs of conversion and there are other signs of conversion such as mortification that we mortify ourselves secondly is pious devotion that we do and third is charitable works so let us go forth and let us understand more in depth by a little bit more few biblical scriptures the book of tobit chapter 12 verses 8 to 10 so all of you if you want to note it down you all can just write or you can just pay attention that is in the old testament page number 371 Yeah. Prayer is good. Listen to the word of God carefully. Prayer is good when accompanied by fasting, almsgiving, and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with wrongdoing. It is better to give alms than to treasure up gold. For almsgiving delivers from death and it will purge away every sin. Those who perform deeds of charity and of righteousness will have fullness of life. But those who commit sin are the enemies of their own lives. So this is a very, very direct quotation from the Bible that says, Prayer is good when accompanied by fasting, almsgiving and righteousness. So you can just note this. There's another word of God that I would like to give. That is the gospel of Matthew chapter 6 verses 1 to 18. This is the most important word of God. Page number 5 of the New Testament. So here, if you see in Matthew chapter 6, the entire chapter practically explains about concerning almsgiving, concerning prayer, and concerning fasting. The reason why I've taken these word of God right at the get-go or at the outset is because to understand very clearly that this is a special calling. The Franciscan charism or the Franciscan spirituality is a very special calling. Every one of you that are listening today live to this this art through our medium of YouTube, every one of us has to understand that God is calling each and every one of us. So it is not me or it's not somebody else, but it is God who is inviting each and every one of us for the special charism of the Franciscan way of life and this Franciscan spirituality. So this question has to arise and we have to ponder in our life, is this charism suiting me? Is the Lord motivating me in this pandemic? Everything is going haywire. But we have, by the grace of God, the Lord has given us an opportunity and he has given us a chance. No matter what age we are at, no matter what position in life we are at, God is motivating us in our heart to the special charism 
through the life and the example of saint francis who imitated our lord in the best possible way so the conversion is basically a conversion of the heart and it is an ongoing process even for me even for every one of us till the time that we die this is an ongoing process during a baptism our original sin was wiped away but due to the human weakness that we have and due to the fallen nature that we have we are always inclined or we are inclined towards the sin and as a result of which we drift away we drift away from the gift of grace that god has given us and we constantly hurt and we grieve our lord so this is a lifelong process and this is a calling of penance not only for the franciscans but it is also for every catholic so it is no, just not for the franciscans but it's also for every catholic that penance is required so that for the for what for the love of god and nothing else for the love of god that we have offended our lord and we want to reconcile not by by our own merit but by the grace of god itself this is the example that saint francis understood very well in his life that he took up his cross daily and he followed our lord day and night he had different plans that he wanted to do you could see in jeremiah 29:11 that clearly says that i have plans for you to prosper and saint francis had a different plan he had a different motivation to do things he wanted to become a knight and he wanted to fight the battle but god had a different plan for him and through that life that he heard the call the vocation the calling that he had god he understood that calling and he knew that god is asking him and interesting him for a different mission and that mission he heard that's why when we also imitate we have to look in our life also that during the during the different stages of our life god is trying to ask us he's asking us he's knocking at our door he's asking every one of us whatever age we are at there is still time to turn back to the lord nothing is impossible for us if god is for us no one can be against us so that calling is for every one of us in this franciscan way of life in this franciscan spirituality to become more perfect to make an effort we have to make an effort for reconciliation reconciling first with our lord second reconciling with the neighbor for the times that we have grieved thirdly reconciling with the creation for the times that we have abused nature and lastly is reconciling with ourselves saint francis of assisi made a firm resolution to change his life therefore we too have to make this firm resolution to change our life for that we need to examine our conscience on a day to day basis and for this the topic of penance has been taken by the catholic the catechism of the catholic church if you want i can give you all the reference of the catechism of the catholic church the ccc clearly speaks in the paragraphs 1436 to 1439 regarding penance further also it speaks on examination of conscience and the sacrament of reconciliation by the catholic the, the ccc in 1430 so all those who would like to learn more about the faith you all can definitely note it down and for your own study purpose further in 1434 to 1435 so this i'm just giving for all those who would like to take biblical references for all those who would like to understand more about the faith or those who are very much wanting to know about the faith for the thirst of the faith so i'm just writing these few biblical and our ccc references for all those who would like to note it down that's it for knowledge purposes so the sacrament of reconciliation as i was saying is another sacrament that gives us a proper disposition we have to understand that we have aggrieved our lord we have aggrieved the holy spirit and thereby we need to make a proper disposition we have to sit in front of the blessed sacrament and to understand where we are going wrong where have we offended our lord and we have to make a firm resolution and a proper disposition of the times that we have hurt our lord and for that we receive great absolution when we truly repent from our heart and we go and we repent and we say we will not do these sins we receive a proper absolution and we receive proper graces to which assists us in our resolution for an ongoing conversion so the sacrament of reconciliation is one of the most powerful forms of conversion that the lord is telling us and the franciscans understand that and it is always advised to make a firm you know make it a commitment so as to regularly in a month or probably within 6 months 
if we could go and to the sacrament and receive this reconciliation, reconciling ourselves with the Lord. And also, there are other forms of pen, other forms of penance, as I said. One is fasting and abstinence, mortification of our day-to-day -day desires that we all cling on to. Mortification is basically nothing but an interior conversion, especially during our Lenten season, wherein we prepare ourselves for the celebrating for the resurrection of our Christ during Easter season. Lent is also like a Paschal mystery, wherein we commemorate the passion, the death, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the anticipation of his resurrection. So thereby, we do these different forms of penance. So further, I would like to, the classic example that is given in the form of conversion is you can see the, the life of the prodigal son, wherein he was, he had gone away from his father and he was enjoying all the riches and all the worldly desires that he wanted to do. And lastly, he was found in the pigsty and he realized that what a miserable life that he has lived. He has squandered all the money. He has gone adrift. He has broken the relationship with his father. But at the same time, he makes a firm change. He realizes where his life has come to and thereby he, he gets up with all that misery and all that agony that is there. He gets up and he turns back. And once he turns back, he goes back to his father and the father so lovingly welcomes him because he knows that the soul, he had gone away and thereby he's come back. So similarly, that same calling is our, in our loving father, in our Abba father. We may, must have done lots of sins. Our sins are as huge as the grain of sand. But, they're, they're, but still, God is giving each and everyone an opportunity to change back, to come back. And this pandemic is the best time that God has given each and every one of us to reflect on the things that are not required, the things that are not essential, but actually what is essential is spending a time with our Lord, spending quality time in prayer, in meditation of the Holy Scripture. And definitely the Lord is speaking to each and every one of us through this medium, through this YouTube medium. So the Lord is op opening doors for each and every one of us to reflect and to contemplate where are we going wrong, what is essential in our life, and what should be the first priority, making God as a first priority, and all the things will be added, as the Lord clearly says in the scripture. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and everything else will be added unto you. So seeking first the kingdom of heaven is by detachment from all the material and the so-called desires that we have. And this is the perfect Franciscan life that gives us an opportunity. It detaches us. It makes us detached from all clinging on. We are always clinging on to a lot of things. So therefore, this is a form of penance that God wants us in a most perfect way. The reason why I'm saying this is because our, our Lord clearly says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So God expects each and every one of us is perfection. And he is addressing that same perfection to each and every one of us because his spirit, he has created us in his spirit and he has created us in his image and likeness. And that likeness has been manifested in our Lord Jesus Christ. And St. Francis very well understood this. And he was from a wealthy cloth merchant as we have heard about his life. We have studied in depth and we have understood what was his life before, how he was transformed by the Holy Spirit and how he changed his life and how he could detach from everything. It was definitely inspired many others. And even till today, as we will be completing 800 years of the rule. So it has motivated so many, each and every one of us. And that is what God wants us to do for Christian perfection. And that Christian perfection is nothing but call to holiness. What is Christian perfection? I will just tell you a few points. What God expects us. He wants us to earnestly to grow in the love of God. Secondly, he wants love for one another. Third, he wants the love for creation. Because St. Francis understood this so beautifully. He could see love even in the poor. He could see love in everyone, even in his creation. And love even in the enemies that were there. So that heights of manifestation that St. Francis understood. He was motivated by the Holy Spirit. That he, in everything he could see love. And that is why... One of the crucial things is to imitate Jesus Christ. That is the triumph of our own moral defects that we have and the gradual acquisition of Christian virtue. This has always to be a calling. 
this has always to be a prayer for every one of us when we pray one of the intention is to be virtuous that how a blessed mother she is the prime example she was full of grace and she had she was filled with grace so similarly we also have to strive to be a saint that has to be each and every one of us intention to be a saint no matter what life we have lived it's never too late but we have to make a firm resolution that yes we want to be a saint and this pandemic has given us the best opportunity possible to reflect on the areas that we need to reflect on on the things that are considered in the world important but in the eyes of god they are not important so it keeps a proper balance i am since i am from a finance background student we normally when we talk about finance we say like for example i'm saying this is mutual funds are subject to market risk that we say but what about your soul your soul is subject to eternal risk and eternal damnation so what is more important is it reaping up things that are on earth or something that we have to look forward in the spiritual realm on the life that is yet to come or the life that we will be facing after our death so what is a man who gains the whole world but loses his soul that is the word of god that actually touched my life and i'm pretty sure it has touched many other people's life that what is a man who gains everything but at the end of the day loses his soul so that question we need to ask that what exactly is important what is required that we need to change a life so this i would say that we all have a fantastic opportunity right now in through this youtube medium that we are having also at the same time the prayers and the intercessions that we are having on a day to day basis to really understand what is our special calling so before i start with the exhortation of the brothers and sisters of penance let me make it very clear that this is a special calling the franciscan spirituality is a different calling by itself there are different spiritualities in the catholic church but the franciscan spirituality is one that really requires us to understand what is this calling our rule and our life is observing the gospel of our lord jesus christ that is a gospel way of life and our mission is go and build lord's church and what is franciscan spirituality is first that we have to understand that jesus is basically a son of god was born among us from the womb of our blessed mother in order in order for what in order to share our human condition that is humanity god came in the form through our blessed mother and he showed us how to live a life how to live in the most simplistic life and that is why one of the franciscan virtue is simplicity we are very very simple down to earth we are called to be very simple detached from everything live simply live humbly and to be among the poor but also to be poor in spirit that is one of the most important franciscan spirituality or the quality that we need to have is to be among the poor and also be poor in spirit not desiring too much whatever the lord has blessed us with praise the lord whatever the lord has not blessed us with praise the lord because that all glory and all honor belongs to our lord jesus christ also to understand that jesus took our sins and suffered injustice and also to understand that he had a cruel death he took up all the sins for us so saint francis so wonderfully understood this human element this human humanity of our lord jesus christ and he wanted to imitate this on a day to day basis not just on a one off occasion but on a day to day basis we all have lots of struggles in our life maybe some financial maybe some personal maybe some are struggling in their work life maybe some are st- struggling in their studies for all the youth they are struggling in their studies some don't have jobs so this these are all real crises that we are all going through and therefore god is asking us among all these crises that we are having among all the difficulties and all the challenges that we are having are we ready to extend a hand and we take that leap of faith and we say lord you take charge of our life i don't know what is right or what is wrong but i believe in you and i through the life of saint francis i am inspired by the life of saint francis and i see what is the man who gains the whole world but loses his soul yet he was ready to give everything he was belonging to a wealthy merchant he was belonging to a you would say like a upper middle class family but yet despite all that he was ready to f- let go of everything why because he understood that calling he understood the importance that your soul is everything at the end of the day no matter what rich 
or what just because we are baptized it doesn't give us a ticket to enter into heaven or just because we are catholics it doesn't mean that yes there is a sure shot place for us reserved in heaven rather the more that is been entrusted to us the more we know the more we have been answerable to and the more we have to enlighten we have to be the light we have to be the light in this world in this pandemic to all those people who have gone astray for all those people those who have lost their way that first we have to be in the light we have to be conformed in the light and we have to be acknowledging the light acknowledging a lord so this is just a nutshell about the franciscan spirituality also i would like to say that a rule or the exhortation that saint francis has given we need to take that a little seriously is because that is a calling for each and every one of us i will be taking this part extensively more in my next session i won't be elaborating more about the life about the exhortation of those who are basically it is divided into two parts one is speaking about those who are concerning to do penance and what are the blessings and what are the gifts and what great mighty how we become instruments of our lord for those who do penance on a daily basis and for those who do not do penance what are the consequences and how you will live your life and what happens if you don't do your penance so this is basically uh, i would say the bifurcation of two before we actually begin with the rule before we actually understand what is the calling what is necessary to be a franciscan and what is called to be a franciscan however i would just like to say a few things what are the characteristics of an sfo what is the characteristics first is as you saw in this sunday scripture that was in isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 to 9 wherein the lord is telling us the lord is close to all who call on him and who call him from their heart thereby the lord is always in search he is knocking at a door and he is asking us why why don't you let me to come in so that is basically what god is telling each and every one of us to open our hearts to give god chance let him take charge of all the difficulties of all the times that all the troubles that we are going through and give god chance once we give this chance then you can see how lord starts to work in our life so the basic characteristic of an sfo or the secular franciscan is always to be you know full of having a deep love as i said towards our lord towards the creation towards our neighbor also required to have a proper you know we have a fraternal meetings we have a fraternity meeting every once every month so this fraternal love and this fraternal bond that we have during our meetings i'm sure every one of us who are part of the sfo very well know that it brings a kind of camaraderie it brings a kind of closeness when we understand each other's problems but not only each other's problems but we are also praying for one another for the sacrifices that we all make for one another for the welfare of the neighbor we understand that yes some people are going through some difficulties how can i help that person not only with the spiritual or the material benefit yes that we can do but also from the time of their soul how can we help one another so that is also we have to understand as a franciscan this is a special calling as i said and this we have to be generous or brotherly love towards our neighbor for the fraternal love so the whole idea beyond why this is essential and why penance is so ingrained in this order is because the lord wants us uh, he wants to decide he wants to discipline us rather if you see in the gospel of hebrew chapter 12 verse 6 wherein the lord clearly mentions the lord disciplines him who he loves so god really wants us to discipline him discipline us rather for the ones that he loves and he chastises every son or daughter whom he receives further even hebrews chapter 12 verse 10 clearly says he disciple he disciplines us for our own good that we may share in his holiness so god is wanting us is giving us an opportunity so whoever he is calling the invitation is open many are called many are called so that calling is given to each and every one of us and he says that if my word abides in you and you abide in me that whatever then you ask and whatever you wish as per the will of god it will be granted to you so this is a clear understanding that god is telling all of us is that he wants a change from us that first step he wants us to take by the grace of god we have to understand that this calling of penance it should not never be taken in a negative connotation 
because penance has the power to help us to detach from a lot of sins and the greatest of commandment that god is giving us is love everything that we do we do it in love love first primarily keeping god as the center of our life that jesus is the center of our life he is the center of our life and once he is the center of our life everything else automatically the lord takes care automatically the lord changes in my own personal i would say testimony if i have to give for the from the time that i have begin to understand my own relationship with our lord it is a relationship because god is a person and in this relationship you can understand that how he transforms those people who are meant to be in your life will be those people who are not meant to be in your life will go away and not only people also from the times of circumstances and situations wherein wherein you are working you will see that there are certain challenges in your life or there are certain tasks or there are certain jobs that are there that we feel that oh i will not be able to handle this i'm nervous why i don't know this is not this is beyond me or this is beyond my capability but somehow when you surrender it and you entrust it to the lord and you say lord i don't know this i don't know how to handle the situation but i surrender this into your hands i surrender it to the hands of our blessed mother mother you take charge and you will see more or less you know the situation uh, the lord takes it and so beautifully you will not even understand how that whole situation which could go worse has really changed in a way that even you will not understand so the lord works in that way that is why if god is for us who can be against us it's such a beautiful word of god that says so i will not further extend today today i will just keep to this in the next session probably i will extend more or dwell more on those who concerning those who do penance and those who do not do penance brother has already beautifully explained us very very extensively very very in a crisp manner that what happens when we don't do penance and what happens when we do penance but however since we are beginning with the rule and we are understanding why this rule is very very important i would just take a little bit more in my next session on this topic because it is very very essential at the beginning we understand what are we getting into why this calling is so important and why this franciscan spirituality is so different and unique and how it is uh, making our motivating us to get into this kind of franciscan way so this calling i would say once again is for each and every one of us no matter what stage of life you are at if you are getting to hear this it's a blessing in this pandemic and in this situation of life and we know what is the world and what is the situation happening but yet by the grace of god he has given us an opportunity to listen to the word of god on practically on a day to day basis through the youtube through the technology through our communication and whatever we can we are trying to do that so therefore in jesus name i thank you for patiently listening the session however is not over still we have time so i would just uh, say thank you for patiently listening to me we will continue with the further part of the exhortation for of the brothers and sisters of penance in the next session as of now i thank you